Hi, Matthias. Welcome to Movie Junk. How are you? Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me at Movie Junk. I'm looking forward to uh, talk to you about the film business. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to admit, this one's gonna be uh, quite special for me. I'm a long time okay. fan, uh, okay. huge fan of Matthias Hughes, super excited to have you on. So I'm gonna really try to not let the inner kid uh, inside <laughs> and come out. Um, but if, if okay. fans, fans aren't familiar, we have Matthias Hughes uh, from No Retreat, No Surrender 2, uh, one of my all time favorite movies, I Come in Peace, uh, mm -hmm. also known as uh, Dark Angel. Uh, starring alongside uh, Dolph Lundgren. You manhandled him a lot in that movie. Yeah, I have to say so. Um, <laughs> I, was, I had to manhandle him. I have so many interesting stories about that movie, really. Uh, if you want to hear him or if you want to ask. But first, yeah, I'll let you talk. Uh, you, know, you, you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig into it until uh, I come in peace. Yeah. And uh, also yeah. Dick Boxer 2, recently Maximum Impact with uh, Danny Dreo and uh, Mark Dacosca. So super excited to have you on and uh, also i don't want to uh, forget to mention that you're also an acclaimed uh, kickboxer black belt in taekwondo um so yeah there's a reason why you're uh, portrayed as a badass in all the movies that you're in oh thank you so much thank you yeah it's been it's been an absolutely pleasure uh it's been 30 years you know and uh it, it's been a wild ride hollywood is very um volatile uh you know if you're in there for 30 decades, you, you've been through it all, you know. Um, just to get into the film business, it, it, it's like a book. Uh, by the way, I wrote a book about it. It's called Shirtless in Hollywood because uh, to become an actor, to go to Hollywood, uh, it's such a crapshoot, I have to say. It's a lot of things that uh, have to come to play for you to even be in a movie. It's unbelievably difficult to imagine what you have to do and what you have to endure to be in a movie when you just you know you're cold calling you come here with your little suitcase you arrive and then i want to be in the movies it's just like in the movies <laughs> you know there's endless stories endless stories about it it's fantastic and i got lucky uh, pretty early on to be honest you know i got lucky <clears throat> even though i put a lot of work into it but i was at the right place at the right time yeah, because I mean, if, if I know correctly, um, you know, because you're originally from Germany, right? So you yeah. came from Germany and uh, you found yourself, you know, just maybe by coincidence, but you ended up at the Mecca, you know, the Gold's Gym. Yeah. It wasn't by coincidence. I mean, I always knew I would have to start there. Uh, in the 80s, especially early 80s, every, we, we used to call it a uh, bigger, better deal, BBD, you know, it was all about Arnold, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, people that stood out with their muscles, you know, and Arnold kind of paved the way, but I never even wanted to be like Arnold or anybody else. I just came here knowing uh, there is a market, you know, Dolph Lundgren, you know, one of those people. Uh, if you go to the right place, it has to be Venice, California, because most of them trained there. Yeah. You know, it was quite a, uh, I saw everybody there over my last 30 years every movie star except Stallone, I haven't seen him there, but pretty much everybody else was in there, you know? So uh, that was the place to start, got to start somewhere, right? Was there uh, any advice you got from anybody? Because obviously they see you working out, you know, athletic guy. Was there yeah. any advice that you got from anybody to kind of steer you in the right direction or was it competitive? Well, you know, I had a lot of advices, but what you have to know, because you're part of the new generation, our generation, um, okay, so there was no cell phone. There was no internet. Um, we just had uh, ourselves and the industry here in Hollywood, it was a lot of meet and greet. You had to know where the places are, where to be seen. Literally, you had to go to the dry cleaner and ask him if he can hang up your picture next to another movie star or possibly someone that is going to be. So because that's how people saw you in the, at the dry cleaners, in the restaurant, places like that. And I've done that, you know, see, everyone say, have your pictures all over town, you know, and go out there at night, go there and then crash this studio, go there. Just if there's an audition, just walk there, agent or no, just wait in line, you know, till you get there and lie about everything and just try to have them see you, see you, you know? And I did that, all of that, you know, it's just really crazy. Uh, I really got to know the city, you know. <laughs> well, for for some of the fans that uh, that don't know about uh, the Mecca, the Gold's Gym, what was it like in the '80s in there? 
You know what I mean? Because that was just the, you know, the beach also too, muscle beach. Uh, what yeah. was that experience like? It, it was fantastic. You know, the, the snots are congested. Uh, it felt like the big world. You see all these people are in super shape and then there's Hong Hogan and then uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and, you know, Mr. T. Uh, all the football players, you know, Laila Zedo, you know, the old, older type, uh, all the wrestlers all the time. So it's a, it's a sense of glamour and you come in there, you know, I'm German, I could barely speak English, uh, but I was really big. So it, it, uh, I got accepted, you know, by these guys. And uh, I kind of knew I would make it, even though there was always someone else coming in bigger than me or whatever, but I kind of had a feeling no, I'm, somehow I knew something's going to happen. And boom, it happened in Goldstream because Van Damme was doing a movie and he got in a fight with the producer and they already shot in Thailand. And he walked off the set and the producer, literally Hong Kong producer, said, well, we're going to have to call the gyms in LA and get a replacement. And so the one of the other producers, an American, the writer, she closed her eyes and opened the yellow pages. Back then it was a phone book. She said, wherever my finger lands, this is where we're going to call first. And it landed on Gold's gym. And they called there and they said, do you know anybody from Europe, you know, martial artist? And they said, yeah, there's this guy. He just joined, you know, from Germany. Do you want to have a look at him? And that's how I got the job. You know, I got up there, boom, did a couple of kicks. Then I got the job. And a couple of weeks later, I was in Thailand replacing Van Damme without, I couldn't even speak English, quite frankly. You know, so it was really embarrassing but I learned it learn while doing you know learning while doing and I was no Van Damme I gotta tell you it, it, Van Damme you know with the splits and everything and he's the GQ I was like you know the opposite but uh, it did work out you know I thought I'd rather die than you know I, I'm gonna kill myself on the set I'm gonna show them what I can do uh, I can't do splits but I can't do anything else you know so uh, that's how it started yeah, I mean, there was a ton of intense uh, fight scenes uh, in No Retreat, No Surrender 2. And I mean, this was, obviously, this is your first big role. And I know you had a small part in Dragnet. I actually love Dragnet as well. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Do you remember that? That's crazy. Yeah, I, I love, and only because I recognized you from my come in peace, I was like, That's him. And wow. that was an extra. They call it extra. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, I mean, obviously, the, uh, the first No Retreat, No Surrender, you know, that was a huge success. You know, so you're... You know, obviously Van Damme was the villain. Yeah. On top of not having any, you know, major acting experience, besides having that will saying, hey, I'm going to die on this, was there any additional added pressure? Were you like... Yeah, oh, because uh, oh, I, just, I just didn't know how to um, fight yet. Film fighting, you know, it wasn't... Yeah, different. It's so different. The Hong Kong people are not very patient, you know, so they really... I got in trouble. They wanted to fire me right off. And then they left left me alone several weeks with uh, a trainer from Korea. Ah, no, I'm embarrassed. I forgot his name. It, it's on my tongue. Maybe I come back to it later. Wonderful man. He taught me about film fighting, you know, and uh, it clicked relatively fast. And then the, my first dialogue. I mean, I heard many times who brought that moron to the, my film set is whoever that, you know, Kill the guy who ever brought me because he's ruining my movie. But literally in one or two days, I just it just clicked. It clicked. And after my first fight scenes, I'm like, oh, this is how it goes. And then it all changed. Like after two, three days, it all changed. And I realized this is what I do for a living. This is what I'm going to do. I didn't know before. I was kind of like, you know, I swear to God, for anybody in this world, I don't care if you 10th degree black belt, go to a film set and see if you survive there. It's not as easy as people think, you know, you can hit someone for real. You have to be really quick with your reactions, you know. It's a lot of pressure. You fight 12 hours, you got to stretch all the time. It's not so easy, uh, but you can learn how to do it. You you mentioned, um, obviously, Van Damme, you know, being, I yeah. love Van Damme, he's one of my all-time favorite actors. Oh yeah, absolutely, I love him too. So, I mean, he's amazing. Yeah, he's he's known for his splits and his amazing kicks. Yeah. One of the best at delivering a kick in in a movie. Um, yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, you're you're right around six five, right? I mean, you're six five, six six. I haven't seen anybody in Hollywood that's your height that can kick as good as you do. 
So you're in, in your height. I mean, you're kind of in a league of your own. You're one of the best. At oh, it. Kind, of, kind of say, I don't know if I still can do it. Actually, what I'm doing right now, I'm training to get into the splits. So I'm almost there. I'm doing it just for myself. Actually, I do everything all over again now. Uh, going back to the 90s, you know, I train triple hard. I'm starting to stretch to the point where I'm going to get into the split sooner or later uh, because it's a challenge, you know. I, I, I just don't want to stop doing it. Yeah, your, your kicks are amazing. And also what I love in your move is your uppercuts. Your uppercuts are, are really strong too. They're all the way, they're super high up. So those are my, my favorite moves that I see you and your oh, thank you. That's in your uh, your kicks. So no, that's awesome. There we go. There it is. Yeah, I guess the uh, the fan in me is just hoping maybe we can get a uh, a fight scene between you and Van Dam. That would be that'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. I mean, uh, it might happen one day or might not. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that. It could have happened many times already, you know, with a lot of names, but uh, there's a lot of things I can't tell you why, and then it doesn't happen. I don't know, you know, but over, everything changes, all the time changes. I remember uh, all of us, Daniel Bernard, Olivier Grenier, Don Wilson, Lorenzo Lamas, Cynthia Rothrock, many others. We, we, we were all like, kind of like on our own doing our things, and one day we all met years into our career and we thought let's do a movie together you know and it didn't work out it, it, it just didn't work out we, everyone's head was so big you know now we all would do it no no questions asked uh over the years everybody got uh humbled including one dumb not humbled but you know older mature uh you don't have to be the biggest and the baddest you know yeah. uh that's why they got expendables off the ground to be honest you know yeah. So actually, you just led into my next question. So there's talks about an Expendables 4. Um, there's rumors that maybe Van Damme's brother, Valan's brother, twin brother, might come back. Can you imagine you and Valan's brother, you um, being on the bad side and you fighting Dolph? I would love it. I, it would be unbelievable. But they, uh, they've been suggested that many times and they have not gone for it. So I, there's nothing I can do. I can't push anymore. Uh, Maybe it happens, maybe I would love to do it. I would love to do it. It's uh, not my decision, you know, yeah. because everybody wants to be in it and they have one Dolph Lundgren and they sometimes they don't think like you. They think, uh, no, we got one blonde guy, we got Dolph, he's like six, five. Well, why the fuck, I'm sorry. Why would we want to have Matthias in it? You know, they don't think that way. Uh, I think that way also because I recreated Dark Angel Part Two, and I'm shopping it around right now uh, as a reunion between Dolph and myself. And uh, uh, let's see if I can get that going. You know, Dolph probably would enjoy his part. I wrote a really cool thing for Dolph, so I'm uh, wanting I'm wanting to shoot it in Sweden in winter. So we got a lot of blood and snow, you know. Uh, you will we'll definitely make. Uh, I've been waiting, you know. 31 years. Ah, yeah, but yeah. the sequel would be so funny because well, the way the kind of the story goes, literally, right, is uh, Dolph Lundgren is a policeman, as you remember, and he completely lost his mind that no one believes him that there is an alien invasion almost happened or maybe happened again. So they transferred him to Texas in some small town, and he's now an old, you know, 60 some years old town sheriff who's completely obsessed with uh, sci-fi with you know like conspiracy theories and this and that in his free time and in his off time you know he's having to do with all this petty crime and all that stuff and then uh, finally it turns out there's a black site in uh, Sweden that the Americans have forgotten about you know they have black sites everywhere and that's where my corpse is hanging uh, burned almost unrecognizable you know with a bunch of other aliens already, similar to me, all like, you know, and uh, he finds out about it because they escape because some kids go in there by accident, you know, in a snowmobile kind of a situation in a storm and they unleash all the monsters, me leading. I'm not so fit anymore, but I regenerate. And then uh, I start killing everybody in the village nearby 
And these are all these Swedes, they're all tall, good looking Vikings, you know. And then Dolph flies from America to Sweden and everyone wants Dolph not to succeed because the government can't afford this to come out. And then, yeah. you know, anyway, in that direction. And I think it would be great for Dolph because Dolph, uh, we're both 62, he's 63, you know, we'd be injured, <laughs> he'd be a little older, but still That's strong definitely. enough. That sound that sounds awesome. The um, if there's a, a few more of these injured aliens, and if they're as strong as your character was, he's going to need yeah. at least a few more helpers to help. And him. he gets a whole village will in the end help. You know, it's just really. Uh, I have some oh, producers awesome. there love it, and they want to push it for it. So we'll see. You know, uh, but that's the film industry. You know, thirty years go by, and you might wake up. 34 years later and you see something that you saw when you were this tall. <laughs> and I, you know? I'll, I'll be I'll be honest. I mean, I, I Come in Peace uh, is one of those movies where I, I see it at least once a year. Always. I always see it. I always uh, make find a way to see you it. You saw it first time. Uh, how old was I? Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually third I'm turning 33. I was probably okay. four or five. Don't don't ask yeah. my parents yeah. let me watch these kind of movies as a kid. Because you were very young, I, you know, that's like, wow, I, I can see how that's so crazy. Because when you're this young and you watch something, it is very scary. Yeah, I just, I loved it because, you know, I'm coming off of, you know, Rocky IV and Drago yeah. and seeing that film. So and Me too, I came off as a fan, you know. And just to see him as a good guy and um, just someone that was so much more towering uh, than him. I mean, there was just no match. Um, and uh, just yeah, little trivia. We're the same size. Well, also, too, I noticed that he was a little skinnier in this film. Uh, maybe he didn't. He wasn't as buff as he normally was, but he was a little skinnier in this film. He was skinnier, and I was really buff, even though I never got never got to take off my clothes. But uh, I was preparing for this movie. I had my own personal reasons why, and. Uh, uh, we never got to face off upper body free, but so, so, so for this role, I mean, how, how did um, how did you come about landing this role? Was this more now that you've kind of established you know, No Retreat, No Surrender Two? Was it an open casting call? Did you get recommended for the part? How did you land it? Just a regular audition in Hollywood's like this. There is a casting call, and then it says we need, for instance. Uh, a top athlete, minimum six five, six six, or taller, who will do all their stunts, all the, their own stunts, can can do anything. And then uh, I was German pentathlon champion, and whatever. So I know how to run and jump. And that got me into the door. And then you see all kinds of top Olympic athletes. Everyone is there, you know, winning that role. And uh, I walked in, but the moment I walked in, I had the job because the director. That's one of those moments he looked at me and he said, uh, you just got lucky. You just got Dolph's movie. And I, I was like, oh my God, Dolph Lundgren. I didn't know Dolph was in this movie. That was Rocky. <laughs> the guy from Rocky, you know, biggest guy ever. Uh, and I saw him before in Venice and I actually talked to him and he was like a god to me. You know, he was like everything everyone can dream of. The blonde, spiky hair, you know, huge. He's so good looking and so intimidated, you know. Uh, so I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And he said, funny thing, that movie was written for Dolph to be the alien. And he doesn't want to take the role because he wants to do more serious acting now. And I'm telling you right now, it's his biggest mistake. It's a freaking mistake. He should have not turned that role, but good for you. He says, good for you because you're going to get Dolph's movie even though it's Dolph's movie, but you play the character he should uh, play if he really would think think it through. And uh, it was true. It was like the movie was, uh, it was more centered around the alien. And what happened is they, since Dolph and I am the same height and everything, they gave me all the advantage. They, they made me taller and bigger on purpose. And they filmed me different. Right. Yeah. Because otherwise it wouldn't have made any sense. You know, they have to be threatening. And that, that was my ace. And they, and they knew that, too. And they did say, uh, but are you willing to die for it? You know, to go through a health threat. And I didn't know he meant it, you know, 
And I said, yeah, I'll do anything. I don't care. And he really did. The director made me shit in my pants every night. Yeah, it was not good. I mean, he did things with me where the people working on the set said, if you allow this shot to be happening like that, how you're mapping it out, materials will not survive this, you know. And I kept hearing it. Uh, and he kept saying, no, no, he's okay. He's just gonna, I know he can do it. He, he, just jump faster, run faster, jump higher. He'll survive, don't worry about it. I know Matthias, he's gonna do it. And you have to understand, I can't see anything with these freaking contact lenses. Yeah, yeah. And, and these shoes are five inches tall. So I was like almost seven foot tall. Yeah. To be a monster, right? And you gotta do all your action and running and this, all that. It's just impossible to, imagine how it is to do something semi-blind with fire everywhere and all this you know that wasn't easy but uh you get used to it you know you just want to do a good job you yeah because i mean you're you're super active in this film i mean with every explosion yeah. you're having to jump over it and i mean you're you're killing a bunch of people and you're tossing Dolph effortlessly um, you know, you, you make it look uh, so easy. Um, one, one thing that uh, I wanted to touch on is you mentioned that, you know, he was initially asked to play your part and he yeah. chose, he, you know, decided against it to, you know, in yeah. his mind to further his career. Do you think that's why he decided to play the bad soldier and universal soldier or did that? Because that happened right after I Come in Peace was universal soldier. Do you think that had anything to do to, with it or was that just coincidence? I think that's a very good question. Now, now, now you're making me think too. Um, not so sure. I think he had the better role. Yeah. In inside uh, Universal Soldiers because that that was one of my favorite movies between Van Damme and Dolph. That was one of the best end fights in the film industry back then. Was those two? They were just perfectly matched and. Uh, it just worked like a charm. I don't know if he won. I think he he did it on purpose because uh, I come in peace. Many people like him in him because he's a good actor. He's handsome and he knows how to play it well. Uh, it wasn't meant to be for him to be the bad guy. I think you know because his look. What I don't even know how he would have looked like. Maybe he had this. You can't have him again with it. He was so famous for yeah. Rocky. I think it was better for him not to do it. Yeah. And then come out with Universal Soldiers. I, I really think so. Yeah, yeah. Because Universal Soldiers, he again looked like he looked like an Universal Soldier. He looked amazing. Yeah. yeah. That was such a good movie. Wow. Yeah. yeah well, I'm excited. And yeah, definitely. I hope that, yeah. um, you know, it sounds like you're, you're past the writing stage. You're in the shopping stage for I Come in Peace 2. Um, as soon as I find out that it's in pre-production, I'm going to share it and, and build some excitement around it as well, too. What's funny is I had some relatives over and we all watched yeah. it uh, last week. And for many of them, it was the first time that they'd ever seen it. They're like, how come I never seen this movie before? This movie is amazing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, not everybody saw it. I have to tell you that this is so bizarre, but this is how Hollywood works. You know, uh, that movie was rated to be so okay so while i'm shooting this film right the direct i was just doing a stunt the director comes up and he says you stop stop for one minute Matthias. i said no i'm jumping through the fire no no it's not so important there's someone here that wants to uh talk to you and i said but we're in the middle of a shoot and he said there's one man in hollywood who can stop any production and that guy wants to talk to you right now he doesn't come he's not gonna wait and i said who is this he says you're gonna find out so um I uh, get to meet this guy and there was another guy, you know, that came in their luxury sports cars, you know, like Hollywood, you know, and uh, they said, listen, come with us right now. In my costume, I went to an Italian place, restaurant, and he said, uh, we watched five minutes of this movie, you know, and this is going to be the next film and you're going to be the next Arnold, you know, Arnold, I have Arnold, I have Sylvester Stone, I have Jean-Claude Van Damme, I have Bruce Willis, I have everybody, and you're the, my new guy, and you're gonna kick everyone's ass, and I'm gonna put all my money on you. You can have any studio you want. You can choose. I give you a million dollars a movie, three movie deal, any studio you call it. You, you were up. So long story short, it, it was on its way to. It was groomed to be that next Terminator-like movie, and then the next day I go to the gym, and then Van Damme comes up. 
you know, and says, oh, Matthias, I just saw your movie with uh, my agent, Jake Bloom, you know, the guy who I talked to, and uh, welcome to the family, welcome, you know, now, you know, you put one of us, and here's what you're going to do. From now on, you know, you, you decide everything and don't let them bully you around and say no and do this. And I'm like, oh, and I made notes, you know, and uh, I thought, oh, this is so cool. But what happened is the movie bombed. It did not make any money at the box office. Uh, I don't know why. So they thought it's going to make like big bucks, poof, you know, and it didn't. And, uh, and with that, the movie was gone. But it, over the years, that's why you say not everybody saw it, right? But over the years, HBO, Showtime, uh, DVD, and VHS, all this, you know, around the world, they showed it over and over, and it became like a second wind. But it was too late to make it uh, a box office. And I actually got fired from my agency for that. As hard as it is, you know, I mean, we're talking about biggest agency in town, you know, they call you in and then they say, well, you know, sorry, I, I don't know what to tell you, but it, right now, bad timing. <laughs> didn't work. See ya. Yeah, if, if I'm not mistaken, I know in the box office, it, it didn't do as expected, no. but in the secondary market, the VHS market, it did really well. It did well, but it's only about numbers. I, I sat there, uh, I had lunch with the, uh, the, uh, executive, what are you, the, the, the top guy in MGM, for instance. And he says, every Friday he's sitting there and he's afraid of his job. You know, it's all about the box office and he, he can only afford so many before he gets fired. Yeah, It's really yeah. tough business. Yeah, well, uh, I, mean, I mean, coming from, you know, I come in peace, you know, obviously you know, your career when you have roughly 75 films, so something good definitely came out of it. Yeah, I, and I, but I made mistakes, you know, it, this is so crazy. That's why I wrote a book about it. It's like, you make so many mistakes. Then the next movie I got out of this one, I turned it down and I got into a huge fight. Uh, it, it was Hell Cup. I don't know if you remember that movie. And I was supposed to be the Hell Cup. Yeah. And uh, I didn't like the mask because I wanted to be Matthias Hoos, you know, yeah. but I already had signed the contract and uh, it was John Daly, uh, the producers who did Platoon and Terminator, biggest freaking producer in Hollywood. And he said, if you, turn, if, you don't, if you don't shoot this movie, Matthias, your career is over. I'll promise you that. And I said, oh, I'm not gonna do it unless you see my face. I, uh, because Van Damme told me, you have to do, you know, you gotta be strong. Blah, blah. And I took it verbally. It's not his fault, it's my fault. And now I wish I would have done this movie. You know, I would have taken that and run with it. Uh, However, that cost me uh, a lot of inertia right after. About for two years, I was kind of blocked in Hollywood and had to do, B, you know, B-movies. <laughs> I had to do the quick kickboxing stuff. It wasn't bad. I'm just saying, you know, boom. I, I put myself out of it for a couple of years, you know, and then the company went bankrupt. Wow. Well, he did the same thing, uh, Van Damme. He refused to do Predator because... Uh, because they weren't going to see his face. It was a camouflaged. But I think back then it was going to be like a martial arts uh, alien. Yeah. And it was his first movie. And I understand it. And we all do mistakes. You, you can write a book about what people turned down that uh, uh, really distressed their career or which others took and made their career. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting, you know, like Van Damme walks away from no retreat, no surrender. Yeah, I completely understand why, because he was upset. He thought he's going to be the lead in the next one. He knew he had that charisma and the talent. He just didn't want to be the bad guy, right? So he says, I, I, I deserve more. I deserve more. And they say, eh. but through his stepping aside, I got the job. Yeah, yeah. That's how it goes, you know. And... and uh, there's no rights and wrongs. It's just you have to have a lot of endurance and you have to have a lot of uh, patience and can't give up and keep going. You know. And I, I see, I mean, obviously you're still in great shape. Um, you know, what, what keeps you motivated, you know, going into your 60s? You know, what keeps you motivated to, uh, to keep ticking? Uh, well, because I love this so much and I write scripts now. So I wrote a couple of... Uh, action at you know martial art movies yeah. and I, i'm in my head planning a certain way of fighting 
that uh, is a bit different because we've all seen already everything. And I want to come up back out with something uh, a bit more new, a bit, but it's going to be really violent. And uh, that's why I'm staying in shape. So I'm going to get more in shape. I think uh, I'll be able to come out with a couple more things, you know, that direction. Uh, we'll see. And you, you wrote uh, shirtless in Hollywood. Uh, so yeah. you've been writing now. I also, you know, uh, know that you're also um, writing some projects in the works, but what motivated you to write uh, shirtless in Hollywood now? Uh, it's just, uh, to be honest, I thought it's so interesting. I sat there and I thought, man, this has been such a ride. I have so much to, to, to tell people. I have so many adventures, so many ludicrous things that have happened and amazing things. And you know, when you're an actor, this is the most amazing thing. You, you, if, you're, if you're normal, if you're not becoming an A-list superstar, if you're like, uh, but you are around it, you see it every day, you know everybody, you know your way around Hollywood, but I know the difference between myself and Sylvester Stallone, right? So you live that kind of life and you kind of like, you, you want to get more and you have your chances and you get really close and then you push back down. But what happens is what you don't realize is that these movies run around the world. So, and as further you go from Hollywood, as bigger you get. Yeah. Right? And then, uh, because anything out of Hollywood, no matter if it's this big, is this big. And I started traveling around the world and I got hired in my low times to do appearances. I mean, in the most freaking weird countries, right? Where I suddenly thought, oh my God, they all saw your movies. And there you were like, and then you have these adventures. They're just worthwhile telling. Because I would never think about those things. You know, I didn't know if I go to uh, Italy, you know, I get police escort, all this crazy stuff, you know, in Spain and all these, uh, Russia unbelievable adventures that I had. And you know, you write it down and then I moved to Bali and live like Tarzan in the jungle, you know? So yeah, the life gets more and more interesting, you know, because you're out of the box kind of a lifestyle. It's the same, if you would talk to Van Damme, you can, oh my God, I met so many people out there in Russia, Uzbekistan, that's where we all go when we have nothing to do, you know? And we all have the same adventures and stories, you know, Seagal, I met Seagal there too. Every, everybody's down there in these foreign countries, you know? And you, you speak multiple languages too. I mean, you speak English, German. Uh, but French a little bit. Russian. Um, no, you just dabble in it. I'm, I'm not really speaking it, you know, when okay. you're there, you learn a couple of words and then- Okay. Yeah, but no, not, not, not speaking Russian. <laughs> I wish. I quite. You, you mentioned uh, uh, Seagal. Do you, do yeah. you have any, any stories that you could share? I love Seagal from one of my all-time favorites. Mark, yeah. any, any Seagal stories you could share that or you're, yeah. you're allowed to share without no. him being mad at us? <laughs> no. I mean, since I've never experienced any stories with him that are worthwhile telling but other people have told me many stories about him it was like oh my god this can't be true and i was really curious to meet him because of all these stories you know yeah. you either hear he's the nicest most amazing guy or you hear oh i don't know you know there's a bit off there you know he, he does certain things that piss off certain people in hollywood yeah. and uh, so i am in russia you know and i'm in the ritz carlton i'm shooting maximum impact and I've been there so many times. I, I go every year two times. I always in the Ritz Carlton and always Steven Seagal is there, you know. And I know he's there when uh, he's got literally bodyguards everywhere, you know, big guys like 6'5, six, 6'6, six, six, the Russian face, you know, strong people. And I'm like, oh, Steven must be here. And he always sits in the hotel lobby, you know, right there that everyone can see him. <laughs> and he's it's like a king, you know, yeah. sitting there. And then, um, holding court and then I, I I befriended him because you know we have many friends and you know we started hanging out a little bit and uh, but he's so pleasant he's he's so charming yeah he's like really um, I don't know something about him he can he lures you in you know I wanted to think 
many people say be careful he's not you know he can be really weird but he was just really nice to me you know i mean nothing bad to say about him uh what can i say love to work with him as well however it never happens i don't know why and we had the same manager <laughs> for so long and he, it, we never ended up working together so but a lot of people don't want to work together that are same height let's put it that way yeah yeah no i mean yeah. he's he's awesome and yeah he he moved to uh, to russia well, not, he's a dual citizen i believe yeah you know you have to know when like i said over there or over there and over there you this famous so you get a lot of perks you get literally paid to go hang out with people so that's why a lot of people are Gerard Depardieu, all these people, everybody's uh, is over there and get paid to hang out, you know? Awesome. So that's why you meet them. And um, Matthias, I definitely want to uh, sneak in some, I actually got some questions from the fans and I promise they're all, you know, nice questions. Uh, one question that we got, because uh, you were also in uh, Big Top Pee Wee, you were the lion tamer in that movie. One of my uh, favorite experiences in, in Hollywood. I definitely want to jump into that, but the question that I have is, what was it like um, working with uh, Paul Rubens? Oh yeah, that, that's so interesting, um, because Paul Rubens, in my time, was a legend. Yeah. He was so famous that he could not walk through the city, or he would have been mobbed by kids <laughs> and adults. He was the king of it all, you know? So I was very, very curious, how is... Uh, P.V. Herman or Paul Rubens, are these two different people or are they always going to be P.V. Herman, you know? And there were two different people. Yeah. Two different people. And he was so kind to me and uh, we hung out, you know, uh, hung out at Randall Kleiser's house in Hollywood Hills, you know. Uh, always so nice to me. And we went to the circus together, you know. He, I, I was not a main actor. I was one of the cast, you know, one of many. And uh, he treated me just like anybody else, you know, always invited me for private things. So he's a wonderful guy. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, before he was, you know, Pee Wee or actually, well, he, he started off more adult comedy and then transitioned yeah. to kids comedy. Right. Um, you know, like I remember him in the Up in Smoke, uh, the Cheech and Chong film, you know. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. most people don't know it. Uh, I guess he must have, uh, uh, played around one day with, you know, and then uh, that was it. It's, a, it's still an adult comedy in yeah. a way, yeah. even though it's like it. Uh, Victor Peter Herman and then the bicycle movie. What was the other ones with the bicycle? The um, first Kiwi, the first one? Yeah, that was really cool. And the third one, um, I didn't see, but I, I have to watch it. I have to actually watch it. I loved it. I thought this is, he's a genius, you know. Yeah, so, and he's still working a lot. Yeah, no, he's he's awesome. He's done a ton of stuff. I mean, I, I actually really liked him in the movie Blow with uh, yeah. Johnny Depp. Yes. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was a awesome. lot of times you wouldn't even know it's him, right? It's just, mm -hmm. it's just there. He's just there, and then he's so good at it. Yeah, he's good at. He's good. That also had uh, Benicio. Benicio del Toro was also yeah. in that film as well. Yeah. So all of us kind of got our start in this movie. Benicio was the dog boy and uh, very nice guy, very nice guy. And we were all in love with the same girl at that time, Valeria Golino, who was the most upcoming movie star at that time, Italy movie star, comes to America, did all the move, A movies with these act, A list actors, Dustin Hoffman, Tom Cruise, you know. She was the it girl. And I remember him and me, we both kind of like, you know, aiming for her at the same time. It was really interesting. Uh, we were like little kids, you know, including Valeria Golino. We were all like with our little crushes in this movie. I loved it. It was wonderful. Yeah, no, that that one to me, I mean, I, I toss between uh, the first Pee Wee and then the Big Top Pee Wee. Both are, are awesome. That yeah. one was just, was just special. I mean, that could have just been a movie on its own and it would have been it would have been just as good. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, it's so cute. Yeah. And oh, and Chris Christopherson, you know. Christoph as well too. Yeah, I mean, tremendous, tremendous cast. And uh, Penelope and Cruz. Uh, and actually, what was really cool, sorry to interrupt you, but I got to meet um, uh, 
No, I forgot his name. The famous guy that the famous guy, I forgot the name, who died of cancer. Uh, also martial artist, uh, ghost, uh, Patrick Swayze. Oh, yeah, yeah. Patrick yeah. Swayze came to the set, and I never forget it. He was so nice because his mom choreographed our dances. Oh, yeah. So he came to the set, and uh, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. Was I'm a fan of Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Did you did you get a chance to see him uh, off set at all, or did you guys just, just see him on set, or that would have been... Yeah, that really, he, he, I mean, he, well, he, I'm just a fan at that point, you know, I mean, he just visits his mom. So, but that was cool because all of us are fans as well. If you're an actor, you're a fan. If I see, I have so many interesting stories I can tell you about movie stars I met, literally the biggest movie stars. And I'll go there and I say, man, I've seen all your movies, you know, and I have them do it to me too. The biggest names in Hollywood have come up and as, hey, I, I love your martial art movies. And I'm like, oh my God, this was just Wesley Snipes, or this was Shag, or this was uh, whatever, Forrest Whitaker. Or, and, but I do it. Each time I see someone, I'll go. And I, and I say, if I'm a fan, I say, I, I'm a fan. You know, I'm a fan. Because that is so nice uh, to hear from someone that is in the business. Absolutely. Yeah. The one I didn't do it to is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I didn't ever say anything to him. Uh, Sylvester Stallone, I didn't. Certain people there have, a, you better not approach them for some reason. I don't know. It, it, it wasn't never right, you know, even though I see them. It wasn't always right. It got to be right. I know Arnold, so, but it's not like uh, uh, he knows, he's, he knows he's number one. He doesn't need to hear, you know, he already knows. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we actually did an interview uh, with Frank Stallone. Uh, I love Frank Stallone. Yeah. I love Frank Stallone. Hey, he, the Stallones are the nicest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a huge Sylvester Stallone fan. I'm a huge Frank Stallone fan. They're just cool people. Yo, oh, absolutely. They're generous. They're generous people. They invite every year someone to their house. And it, you don't even have to be their best friend. Or anything. Come on over for Christmas. Come on over. Yeah. yeah, Frank, I'm glad to talk to Frank. That's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, Frank, Frank's awesome. That was a phenomenal interview. Um, yeah. I actually um, had seen uh, Sylvester the twice. I actually, the first time I saw him was with Arnold, uh, where I actually physically saw them together. I was just in awe. And then the second. About where it was? Oh, it was at the uh, Cafe Roma in Beverly Hills. Cafe Roma, yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's that's and it's very intimidating, right? Oh man, that was that was. Oh, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even speak. I because uh, I was at the table right next to them, and you're trying not to look, um, yeah. but it's but it's them. You know what I mean? It's very difficult. They have a lot of charisma, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of energy. Like there was something important being discussed, and Frank um, Stallone was also there. Uh, Frank Pesci was also there. He was from Beverly Hills Cop, uh, one and two, and he's done a ton of stuff. Um, but the second time I saw Stallone. Um, I actually had a chance to say hello to him. I took a picture, super nice guy. So it was actually kind of wild is um, I was walking up to take a picture and he was calling me to take it with him. And some oh. guys came and cut me and then he took the picture with them and said, hey, you, come here. I was like, <laughs> I, love it. I thought I lost my spot and it was like, it was awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll say so nice. The, thanks for saying those things because that reconfirms it, that he's one of the cooler guys, you know. Because that's that's your fear, and that's probably the first time where I didn't want to say anything to Arnold and Sylvester, because these are my heroes. Yeah. And for me to go up and say something to them, and then maybe they weren't receptive, it would have it would have broke my heart. But to yeah. actually talk to him and 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 see how nice and generous he was, I was like, man, this is this is awesome. I love you even more. I went and watched Rocky that night. I see. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's uh, to be honest, it's timing. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is timing. If you catch someone at the wrong time. Not good. If you catch them where they expect to be caught, so to speak, Cafe Roma for sure. You know, uh, Arnold used to have uh, cigar nights at Chatsy. So that was the time to go to Arnold and say something, you know. Um, that was the right time, so to speak. You know, if I see Arnold and Stallone and Cafe Roma and they're doing, uh, there's no way I would say it. There's no way. Yeah. I just, uh, that's a leak on its own. These are the biggest movie stars in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, 
transitioning to the the next question from the fans. This is more of a fitness question, not a movie question. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, you're still in phenomenal shape. What advice can you give to someone that is struggling to get in shape? Not not trying to be, you know, a bodybuilder body like you, but just you know, some words of wisdom to someone that's trying to get in shape. What uh, you, have to, you have to know why you want to get in shape. Anything in life, you have to have a motivation attached to it. So if for me, it was my job. Well, since I was little, I wanted to be better, bigger, because I'm this little boy and I always, oh, you know, thought I'm nobody, you know, skinny, tall, always being made fun of and big nose and this and that. So I figured, all right, uh, I'm, I'm going to do something about it, you know. So you have to have the motive and then you got to stick with it. You got to see that in front of you, no matter what it is. Why do I want to be in shape? And if it's for just to feel better and this and that, it's uh, it's all about nutrition, you know. So uh, you you should never you should never eat more than a handful of each item. So basically, you have a handful of rice, a handful of protein, and a handful of vegetables, and you put that on the table and you do that three four times a day you'll be fine you have everything you need you know the problem is and i succumb to it and everybody does that we have really hard times in life no matter who you are or leisure times where you watch netflix movies and it's you know we all oh, a glass of wine or maybe a hot ice cream you know and it depends how often you do that i have had times where i suddenly do it every night and then all my gains are gone you know everything's kaput and then I see, oh, I just kaput myself. <laughs> and it takes about two, three months. And then, you, oh, I got a tabula rasa. I am going to be disciplined again, you know. Motives, for what? Yeah. Now my motive is uh, I shoot more movies. I start another movie soon. So I want to be in the best shape I can till I look at Stallone. Look at Sylvester Stallone, 70-some years old. Still going. Still rocky. Still rocky. Look at Dolph Lundgren. 64 so still going yeah. keep going just keep going That's arnold cool. is a bit older he still works out believe it or not arnold is a few months younger than stallone one or two months. <laughs> oh, i didn't even know yeah one because oh. i i always see uh arnold wishing stallone a happy birthday Oh yeah, and then it follows with uh, arnold after but just by a few months but that that's just credit to sylvester you know because you know, he was, you know, smaller than Arnold, but yeah. he competed and, you know, look at him now, you know, 74, 75 and still yeah. in hockey shape. It's, it's unbelievable. It's a bit easier when you're not as tall. I mean, I know Lou Ferrigno well, uh, I, I, I fought against him and, oh, he's so big. And, but I see that Lou and most other giant guys have more problems staying fluid than Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone is like the perfect package. And I'm sure Van Damme also, they will always be more fit than let's say myself or Lou Ferrigno or this and that, because it's it's better not to be so tall. Most people go crooked after a while, you know. It's not, I mean, yeah, it's an advantage in the end to not be so, so tall, I gotta tell you. That's what I noticed uh, about Stallone is that his posture is perfect. Perfect. Right? So, okay. he, you know, even if he's a little shorter, he looks taller because he's so, his yeah. posture is really good. And at that age, I mean, I'm, you know, a half his age, you know, less than half his age. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, like this. And if I can just be like this, man, that's unbelievable. Yeah, you just have to have the motivation and say, you know, I'm going to be like this. Uh, all of us, excuse me, spend a lot of time now on the computer. You yeah. Know, yeah. Including myself. And that is a new lifestyle it's tough on us. You, know. you don't even realize how long you, right? You're editing, you, you're doing all your stuff. Oop, six hours gone, seven hours, whatever. One should get up every hour and a half, should, but probably not doing it, you know? Uh, my girlfriend too, she started to be an influencer now and uh, eight hours, eight hours a day. A couple hours shooting, rest is editing, putting it out networking right so it's, uh, it's not an easy job absolutely um yeah. 
Matthias, I can I can talk to you for for hours again. This has been a dream to to, to meet, and I'm super. Oh, you made my day. Thank you so much. This, this was unbelievable. Um, I'm going to be paying attention to see when I come in. Piece two comes out. Yeah. Any any. any if it comes out, I mean, I let you know. You know, uh, we can only try. Yeah. Uh, if it's meant to be, if not, we'll have one. We'll move on. You know. So we'll see. Any, anything we can do to uh, to spread the word, absolutely. And uh, and also, where, where's the best place uh, for fans to uh, to get your book, Shirtless in Hollywood? Oh, on Amazon. On Amazon, perfect. Shirtless yeah. in Hollywood, yeah, yeah. I'm going to uh, get it and I'm going to add it right over here to the clip. Oh, yeah. oh, awesome. We'll put it there. So, um, Matias, thank you very much. Again, I can't say how honored and humbled I am to uh, to have you on. And uh, definitely want to do this again. And uh, yeah, hopefully one day we can we can do round two uh, in person. That would okay. be that'd be awesome. Yeah, fantastic. All the best. All right. And uh, very nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Take care. You too. Bye. Take care.